everybody, it's Chris Eads, Wootini from GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Uh, it's a little chilly here uh, in New York, uh, mostly because it's winter, but also because this weekend it has been like 15 degrees, and it's not so much the cold, it's just that every time it's super crazy windy like this, um, it reminds me that um, we have really, really old, drafty windows in this apartment. So... When it's cold, it's not so bad. When it's cold and windy, that's when the cold gets to come in. Um, but anyway, uh, enough about my complaining. I'm just saying that to explain my wonderful Miyazaki sweater uh, that I'm wearing. Uh, I wanted to talk about this last week, but I had other topics, so I'm going to say this week... But last week, I went to the movies, and I wanted to talk briefly about Jupiter Ascending, um, which people are ragging on, although I do know people who do have enjoyed it like I did. Um, and someone made a great comment where they said, you know, if this was presented as a Final Fantasy game, nobody would have blinked and everyone would have loved it. But instead, everyone's complaining about it. Um... But uh, it is very kind of Final Fantasy with the opulent visuals and, and ridiculous, overcomplicated storyline and all. Um, but I, I liked it. Um, I will say that um, Mila Kunis and Shadem Tanning have, like, absolutely no chemistry together. And she's kind of a bland heroine. But in the end, the script doesn't actually turn her into a kick-ass heroine, so I guess that's okay? It's not really okay, because you kind of expect her character to grow and develop, and it, she doesn't really as much as you might like. Um, but what I liked about it were the ridiculously opulent visuals. I mean, the spaceships, and the costumes, and, like, the universe that they created was so amazing that I kind of wish we'd spent more time there. That's my only real complaint. Well, I mean, other than aside from some script and character and acting issues and whatever, I wanted to spend more time in space exploring this universe, but there was a lot of setup that had to be done on Earth first, and I kind of wish they had been able to get through the setup a little quicker so that we could have enjoyed more of the space. Um, because... It was long, but it wasn't like it wasn't like a three hour, two and a half hour, two hour, forty five minute epic or anything. Um, I think it was just over two hours. And I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't have minded an extra half an hour exploring their universe, but whatever. Um, oh, and also, I will say that um, because the main draw, at least for me, I feel like the main draw for this movie is the incredible sci fi space opera visuals. Um, I recommend seeing it in 3D. It is a conversion, but I only noticed a handful of moments where my eye caught things that weren't quite right. Um, I had originally been led to believe this was done in actual 3D with proper 3D cameras, but it turns out it's a conversion. There's only a handful of bits that didn't quite work, um, but there are some quite stunning visuals that are made even more stunning because of the third dimension. I'm just a 3D nerd, so if you're not into 3D, then ignore that. Um, but if you'd like to see a really ridiculously over-the-top space opera sci-fi movie, uh, you could do worse. Um, at least in my opinion. Some people hated it. I enjoyed it, because I also enjoyed that it was original. Um, I mean, okay, yeah, it's kind of borrowing from here, there, and everywhere, and there was an extended... Um, homage to uh, Brazil, which is very clearly an homage because they got Terry Gilliam to do a cameo, so they weren't ripping it off. That one was an homage. Um, but at least it's an original script. It's not a remake, it's not a reboot, it's not an adaptation, which is pretty much what I feel like you get nowadays. Um, so I appreciated something original for a change. That's me. Uh, so, uh, if you've seen it, let me know what you thought, and if you didn't like it, then let me know that too, but I don't care, because I liked it. Um, as for games, um, sadly, um, I'm still just playing Dragon Age. I really am. Um, 
I know uh, that they just released uh, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask and Monster Hunter 4, but um, I won't be playing those. Um, definitely not Monster Hunter, because as I've said before, I don't like Monster Hunter. It's never appealed to me. I've tried a demo, and it didn't work for me. I didn't care. Um, Majora's Mask is intriguing, but the gameplay mechanic of constantly rewinding time and going back to redo things and then rewinding again to go do more and then rewinding again to complete more stuff, I'm afraid that might feel repetitive to me. Even though I know that you rewind and you go and do other things, uh, I'm worried that the very act of rewinding time is going to drive me insane and I'm not going to like that. Um, because that's one of the things that I've always hated about, like, earlier video games before you could save your game is, you know, I never liked platformers because you couldn't save your game and you would play and then you would die and then you'd have to start over at the beginning. Or, at best, a checkpoint. Um, but, uh, I... So I'm kind of wary of Majora's Mask and I didn't run right out to get it. Um, just like I also did not run right out to get the new 3DS. Um, because, again... I have my lovely Animal Crossing 3DS XL, so I am in no hurry to ditch that for some shiny new piece of equipment. Now eventually, they will either come out with a new 3DS XL that's Animal Crossing branded or something branded that I love and can't live without, at which point I will then make the switch. Or they'll come out with a game that can only be played on the new 3DS XL that I desperately need to play, and therefore will have to suck it up and buy whatever new 3DS XL is the most interesting color or pattern. Um, unfortunately, um, I did not cover the midnight launch of the new 3DS XL and Majora's Mask and Monster Hunter at Nintendo World uh, at the end of last week because um, I was sick. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm still kind of not great right now. Um, but it was the kind of thing where if I could have gone by after work or something and maybe just hung out for half an hour, but it was at midnight and I just couldn't, I wanted to be in bed at midnight. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry to let you down, but uh, I, I was not well. So, uh, sorry, but I'm sure we can all assume that there was a massive long line that stretched around the block and people stood in line in the bitter freezing cold until like 2 in the morning so that they could get their new 3DS and Majora's Mask and they sold out of everything I'm sure very quickly. Um, but uh, if you'd like to talk me into Majora's Mask, uh, feel free to use the comments here on GayGamer.net or on YouTube. Uh, just know you've got your work cut out for you. Um, oh, also, as far as Dragon Age goes, um, I'm still enjoying it a great deal. Um, and I, uh, I'm accomplishing quite a bit. I feel like I'm really getting through some stuff, but, um, I, I've seen, a f I've now seen three separate dragons in three separate areas, and I have avoided all three of them because I just don't feel like I'm able to, uh, approach a dragon because I don't feel like I am capable yet. But then, uh, finally this morning I said, you know what? let's just go ahead and try it. So I gave it a shot, and we were massacred. Although, okay, we weren't completely massacred. We did put up a bit of a fight, you know, for a few minutes. Uh, but then people started dying, and I'm like, why aren't you using your potions? What's wrong with you people? And I go running over, and I would revive them. But eventually, it just kept burning us all to death, and oh well. Um, so my question to you guys is, A, which dragon should I approach first? Because I went to the one in the Hinterlands because I feel like that's the first dragon you see, so I feel like that should be the first dragon that you can try to kill. Um, I think it was level 13, um, and I think my party is level 12, and I think I just became level 13. So I thought we'd have a fighting chance. Um, and then secondly, uh, what kind of a party would you recommend? Uh, all mages and archers to keep a distance from it, because that to me now seems, because I was using my regular party, which is a mix, um, but I'm thinking maybe distance attacks are the way to go, and maybe not have any warriors in your party, but then I'm like, you need a heavy hitter. I don't know. 
Um, and then third, um, do I have to switch to the tactical camera? Because I really, really have been avoiding that this whole time because I did not like that. That's what killed Dragon Age 1 for me, was having to do the battles like that, and it was really irritating. Um, and so far, as I said in my previous podcast, they've all been doing a really good job of fighting on their own and not dying. Um, I have noticed that I've equipped a couple of people with, like, uh, you know, bombs, and they don't use those ever, um, and I feel like that's something I'm going to have to eventually use the tactical thing so that I can have them use those, because they don't seem to use them, and there doesn't seem to be anything in the AI settings where you can set it so that they'll use those bombs. Um, they just never seem to. I've never seen them do it. They never deplete, so I don't know how to make them throw those, except to go in and do it manually. Um, but uh, I think I might have to do that for a dragon. I don't know. Um, the other problem is that because I always play my main character, who is an archer, um, everyone else has all these abilities, and I've never played as them, so I am not familiar with what Dorian's spells all do, or what the Iron Bull's attacks all are. So, like, those special attacks, I'm not going to know what any of them are, so I'm not going to really be able to use them properly. Um, although in tactical, I guess it's turn by turn, so you have a chance to look through them and think about it, I guess. Um, but any tips on dragon slaying would be very much appreciated, you guys. Um, and until then, I got a bajillion other things to do, so the dragons can wait. Um, so I will see you back here next week, and I will have more random crap to talk about. Stay warm! Bye!